All right, all right, all right. Welcome on in, and thanks for joining me as always. Uh, and welcome to a rare Saturday stream where I'm not entirely sure what prompted me to do this, other than the fact that I was just kind of tired of browsing the Twitter machine and and figured I'd go ahead and stream something. Uh, really, I wanted to stream Cyberpunk, but that's just not happening. But uh, with that being said, uh, hello Game Master again. Good to see you. Glad you came back to, to give me another shot. Uh, today we're going to be playing uh, some Battletech, and specifically the Battletech uh, Advanced 3062 mod, which is one of the big two major mods for the Battletech uh, strategy game or tactical game by Harebrain Schemes. Um, it's probably my favorite of the two because it's a little more streamlined, a little less bloated, uh, a lot less buggy, and just generally seems to run better and function better and, and, and overall is just a more pleasant experience for me. Um, the other major mod pack is, if you don't know, Rogue Tech, which kind of ticked off the whole Battletech modding scene. Uh, but the problem that I have with that pack is that not only is it buggy, and not only are the people that develop it very, very uh, not friendly, but on the other hand, you, you have the, um, they, they have added so many features that the game becomes very opaque. Um, and also, more importantly, they've added so many different features in terms of vehicles and battle armor and helicopters and all this other crazy stuff to the point where, you know, a, a single turn can take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and that's, that, that kind of drives me insane. I want a little more streamlined experience than that. Um, so, yeah. We're uh, we're gonna get started with some battle tech again. I think this is the first time. Oh, uh, that that's not true. This is the second time. Let me switch over to here. We go. Uh, this is the second time I'm actually streaming this, but the first time that I'm gonna stream it in the long form. We also did this uh, back when I did my test stream a couple of weeks ago. This was the game that we used to kind of calibrate all the sound settings and all of that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I will say one thing that I have learned having played this game is, um, Streamlabs does not like Battletech at all. Uh, OBS does not want to recognize it as a game. It does not want to play the sound. It does not want to capture the video. So this, this game is actually kind of a challenge to get running on stream. Uh, because every time I start the game, I have to redo all of my settings just to get it to show up. But uh, yeah, here we are at the main screen. Um, this is a campaign that is still relatively early. Uh, I think the game starts on like December 30th or something like that. Um, so pretty much all that I have done is gone through the character creation, the background creation, um, I've done the, uh, like, like all of the beginning of the game stuff so that you guys don't have to sit through that. Um, and this is basically the point where we would start our first mission. So, uh, just to give you guys a lowdown of what we're looking at, uh, go to the barracks here. And of course I have done some light modding work to put myself in the game. Uh, and then we just have random pilots here, um, these pilots are randomly generated by the game. There are some that are kind of pre-generated. Uh, but I have set these settings on a little bit of a more difficult curve. Oh, sorry. Hit the wrong button there. But, well, there you go. Now you know I can take the jacket off. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is... The, these are a little bit more difficult settings because the, the, the pre-generated pilots are what they call Ronin. And they have, they tend to have a little higher stats and be just better pilots overall. Um, and so, uh, oh, oh, you're surprised by that. Well, let me, here, I got a couple more things for you. See, I can take the glasses on or off. I can even change up the hairstyle if I really want to. Yeah. I, 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 I've put in the work. I've put in the work. 
but I figured I'd go for a little bit of a different look today compared to what we were doing for the Delta V streams. Um, but yeah, so the settings on this, I have the, I have lethality turned up. So basically if any of our mechs get destroyed, if our pilots don't eject, they will die. Um, also I have the Ronin pilots turned off so that we won't be getting any extra stats or anything from them. Uh, so yeah, I, I've tweaked some of the difficulty settings, uh, just to make the game a little bit more challenging. Um, but yeah, so these are our pilots. Again, none of them are spectacular. They're all rookie status, with the exception of myself. And this is actually the commander. Uh, you get to create your own character at the beginning of any campaign. Um, and so this is the character that I created for myself. And so obviously I have some experience. I have some skills that gives us a little bit of an edge. Uh, but one of the things that this mod definitely adds is like fatigue for your pilots. So you can't just have your characters go into every single mission like you do in XCOM. Uh, you could potentially get hired here, Game Master. There's there's always the possibility. Um but yeah, so they, they add fatigue, so you can't just run your pilots over and over and over and over again. It kind of incentivizes you to have a large roster. Um, we head over to the mech bay here. And uh, again, because this is the very, very beginning of the campaign, these are just the default mechs that we started with. I have obviously customized the paint job to be as goofy as possible. Um, but yeah, so th we, we got a trebuchet here. It's a long range support mech. It's not terrible, uh, at least for early game, but I am going to be looking to replace it with something that's got a little more hitting power as soon as possible. Um, we have a Whitworth, which if you don't know anything about Battletech, the Whitworth is garbage on legs. It, it's extremely slow. It's not very powerful. Um, it has very low armor, so it's not for 40 tons, because there's a tonnage limit, for 40 tons, what you get in a Whitworth is kind of doo-doo. So I'm not super happy about that. We'll be looking to replace this thing as soon as we possibly can. The Treb, we could hang on to for a little while and probably be okay, but uh, the Whitworth has got to go as soon as possible. Uh, we've got a panther, but this is not one of the good panthers. Normally, the panther has a PPC. Uh, this particular version only has the large laser, and it's kind of a crappy large laser at that. So again, we're we're starting in the periphery. We're starting in the Torang Concordant, uh, because of course that's where Van Zant is, and that's that's my Oshi in terms of uh, where I where I hang out in the BattleTech universe. So th this panther is kind of also do do but it will do the job at least in the early game um and then of course we have a toro and a hornet both of these are light mechs they're they're not very good but they will they will give us a few extra guns on the field until we can find something else um so yeah aside from that i don't think i did i start an engineering project i don't think i did so uh this is the the part of the game where you basically build up the ship so this is uh, i'll explain this here uh, we'll obviously go with the ship upgrades and you'll probably notice I already have a lot of experience with this game so I kind of already know what I'm doing um but yeah so this this big thing this is the Argo this is essentially our base it's a ship that allows us to carry all of our mechs and crew and everything all over the galaxy um and it starts in a state of disrepair so through the engineering screen we can slowly add all of these different upgrades to make it better to improve our pilots and medical and all that stuff so I, again at the early game we're not going to have any of that so i'm going to have to start upgrading as we upgrade it's going to increase the costs uh, the upkeep costs that we have uh, you can see we have our first financial report every 30 days you have to pay your people you have to pay your maintenance costs and that's going to come out of our funds so effectively what uh, what battletech is at this point is a mercenary company simulator so we are going to attempt to not die and make as much money as possible. Uh, and with that being said, we'll head over to the command center and we'll have a look at the missions that are available and see if we cannot get stuck in. Uh, based on the mechs that we have currently, we're going to be sticking to some of the lowball contracts. Um, so yeah, I think at least until I get a feel for the team that we're running, I'm just going to stick with the little half skulls here. We're not going to get a whole lot from this, but it's better than nothing. 
Um, because we're not going to get a whole lot from this in terms of decent salvage, I think I'm going to up the payment so that we make more money uh, as opposed to salvage. So that's in the Battletech universe, that's that's effectively whenever you're a mercenary and you go out onto the battlefields, these are the two metrics that you measure your success by the money that you make and the amount of stuff that the client will allow you to salvage from the battlefield. Um, again, because this is the early campaign, I don't think we're going to find anything worth keeping in terms of salvage. So I'm going to focus on money, at least initially. Um, actually, you know what, before I do this, because I've gotten myself into trouble doing this before, let me double check. Yeah, it is a battle. There are certain mission types uh, that that are not good, that are kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so I want to make sure that I didn't accidentally sign us up for one of those. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any vehicle pilots beyond the one, so I can go here and we actually have our little galleon, which is a, a light vehicle. So we're going to be able to field four mechs and one vehicle, but as you can see, eventually we'll be able to field even more than that. Potentially multiple lances of mechs. A lance is effectively a squad of mechs. Uh, you got four mechs here. Um, in addition to that, you can field four vehicles, four sets of battle armor, but I don't have any. Um, but yeah, so again, early in the game, going to be kind of slow. But we're never going to get anywhere if we don't start popping caps. Um, another thing is it's it's going to take a little bit to load. I am running on a lot of RAM and I'm running on an M2 drive. But even so, this game has a lot of assets to load. So this will probably take a minute. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, while we wait for the game to load, how is your Saturday? Mine, at least so far, has been pretty good. But uh, how are you guys doing? It's it's the weekend finally. So hopefully everybody's off of work, kicked back, relaxing. Also, I do want to make sure that the game audio is working because uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of noise so far. Good to hear, Game Master. Good to hear. Oh, wow, look at that. And loaded a lot faster than I thought it would. Yeah, you guys still aren't getting any sound. Give me just a second. But this is what I'm talking about, how the the OBS does not like Battletech. That's very strange. The audio shows that it's working, and yet for some reason, you guys are not getting anything on your end. Well, poop. Let me see if I can troubleshoot this. Ah, you know what? Screw it. The sound isn't super important. And I'm just going to sit here and run my mouth the whole time anyway, so that'll probably drown out any sound that the game is producing. Ah, uh, yeah. Still nothing. God dang it. That is immensely frustrating. Because I really like Battletech, but I hate the fact that OBS hates Battletech. All right, so here we are in our first mission. Uh, our objective is basically just to destroy the enemy. A very simple mission for what is effectively a not stellar team just yet. Um, we'll get there eventually. And there we go. Now that I've moved forward, I do have uh, turn speed sped up because these are giant robots and they move kind of slow and that can make the turns really slow as well. Uh, but we have already detected an enemy somewhere. Um, we had enemy contact, but it's not... I don't see where. That's all right. We'll find him here shortly, I'm sure. So there is cover systems. Um, there's also, they talk about the um, evasion. So you see here, each mech gets evasion every turn, and that just comes from movement. So uh, it's, it's always in your best interest to stay mobile because uh, the more you move, the more evasion you get, and the more evasion you have, um, the... Uh, the faster, or I'm sorry, the easier it is to avoid getting hit. 
Yeah, cake walker. I, I don't know what it is. It might just be my setup. I'm not 100% sure, but I have, even when I did my test stream a couple of weeks back with Be with Battletech, um, it just, for whatever reason, OBS does not like it. it. It does not want to recognize the audio or the video from this game, and I wish I knew why. I, I'll definitely troubleshoot it some more and see if I can get it working, but uh, but yeah, I don't I don't really know. But that's okay. So I'm going to use our, our vehicle here to scout ahead a little bit, see if we can get some sensor contacts on the enemy. We know they're out there. I'm hoping that they're not going to be um, super dangerous for us. Uh, I'm actually playing uh, Advanced 3062. And you're right, that may have something to do with it as well, because uh, 3062 does go through like a launcher, and that might be interfering with OBS. I definitely considered that, uh, but I'm also not sure what I can do about it. I don't know if there is anything I can do about it. But again, it's it's something I'll troubleshoot down the line. There it was. Oh, I hate this voice. Yeah, Rogue Tech is a little rough, and I was talking about that at the beginning of the stream. Uh, Advanced and Rogue Tech are like the big two mod packs, and I love Rogue, Rogue Tech for what it tries to do. Uh, but I don't think that the engine or the game can really keep up with the ambition of the Rogue Tech team. And and it, it runs like pickled ass. Like Rogue Tech, you... I'm running on a really good machine, and Rogue Tech still just... I cannot get it to run at all. It, it Yeah, it runs, but it's really slow. It's very choppy, um, and, and the memory leak really kills it. So yeah, it's... Again, I love Rogue Tech. I love the ambition. I just think they picked the wrong game. All right, so we are finally picking up some mechs, but of course our pilots are garbage at this point and uh, they aren't able to determine what exactly we're looking at just yet. And I'm not going to waste any time or ammunition shooting at them until we know what we're up against. But thankfully they're going to come to us. And here we go. Wait a minute. You know what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. Um, Yeah, we're not really going to have decent chances here, but I'll still give them the old PPC. Thankfully, energy weapons don't cost any ammunition, so it doesn't really hurt us to try to take the shot if we can. Oh, a raven. Now that is not good. Ravens are primarily electronic warfare mechs, and if we're going to get one of those very early on, that is, that, that's probably going to give us some issues, because our pilots are already doo-doo, and a bunch of ECM that's going to jam our sensors and make it harder for us to hit is, uh, this, this might be a little bit of a drawn-out fight. Um, yeah, I don't. Even with the large laser, we're not going to have a shot. I think this hill is blocking us. That's okay. We'll brace up. I'm trying to stay in cover, and I'm trying to stay mobile to minimize our chances of taking damage. Yeah, the, the Owens is not what worries me. What worries me is the Raven, for sure. Um, all right, let's see. I don't... I think we'll just move back here. Can you... Yeah, that's right. You're a vehicle, so your turning radius isn't great. But that's okay. We're actually close enough to use the small lasers. The way that, uh, the way that Advanced, Battletech Advanced, handles small lasers is a little different from the base game, and the range is severely reduced, so... So yeah, this, this is the thing that I wanted to talk about. I, I've noticed this, this person's name is Minuteman. And I don't know, like, maybe it's just me, but this portrait is clearly presenting as male. You get some beard stubble here and things like that. And yet, that is not a male voice. But you know what? You, you do you. You live your truth, Minuteman. That's, that's the, 
one of the weird things that can happen, or maybe it's intentional, who knows? But that's that's just the procedural generation of the pilots. So I'm, you know what? Like I said, Minuteman can, can live their truth. I'm not going to assume anything about them. As long as they do the job. Then again, they're all rookie pilots, so... Uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, so I've got my trebuchet up here in the front, which is a bad idea. And now I need to try to find a way to back up a little bit so that hopefully I can get some effective range out of these missiles. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But we can multi-target. So I'm going to target both of these mechs. And we will use the missiles on... Oh, well, poop. The accuracy is still kind of not great on these. Well, never mind. I guess we're not going to multi-target then. I'll just take the laser shots. No, no stop. I don't, I don't want to multi-target. Thank you. There we go. We'll just, we'll just take some pot shots here. That's true. I, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. So yeah, they're all mimes. We, we have brought a crew of mimes. Yeah, I do feel bad about that. I apologize. Uh, what, if and when we finish this mission, I will see if I can troubleshoot it. But I also don't want to waste a bunch of time on stream uh, with you guys having to deal with my my sound issues. Uh, let's see. Um, with just a PPC, you know what? Screw it. Let's 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 live dangerously. Yeah, I know, it's only a 17% chance, but you are going to hit anything anyway. Yes, I know, it was a miss. I'm going to be responding to sound bites, and you're not going to know what the hell's going on, so. And I'm starting to think that maybe it's just these two mechs, like, because no one else is coming out of the woodwork. I'm not picking up any other sensor contacts. Now, again, we did run into a raven, so it's possible that they've got more ECM jammers out there, but just from what I've seen so far, it really does look like maybe it's just these two mechs. Um, so I'm going to do the classic front mission strategy here and focus all of my fire on a single enemy. Because that's, that's what you should always do, is just burn down. That's not true. It's, you, you do what you like in these types of strategy games, but I played a lot of front mission when I was younger, so that whole four dudes do the dog pile thing is, is my go-to. So we'll do a little bit of movement just so we can continue to get evasion and take some shots. Ah, oh, there we go. So we did punch through some armor on that one, which is good. Means maybe we'll destroy this guy just a little bit faster. Um, and I don't think what what is what is this raven using? The only real danger is going to be that LRM. So if I get close, well, closer, then it should be less of an issue. I'm over here pointing my back at an enemy, which is not a great idea. All right, there we go. We're doing some more damage. And again, the treb, let's all bag. See what we got here. Oh, well, we're getting a little better chances with the missiles. I don't think, yeah, we don't have any other types of ammo. So let's just, let's just go with what we got here. Yeah, that's not the worst. Out of all the mechs that we have on the field, the Trev is probably going to be the most durable at this point in the game. So I'm okay with that. Um, let us. I'm going to back you up, and we will take the shot here. I'm even going to throw some missiles at it, even though they're... Oh, well. So effectively, what we did there was took off a leg, and because we took off a leg, that caused the, or I'm sorry, we took off the torso, which caused a 
the destruction of that mech, which is good. That, that takes that one gun off the field. So now we can focus down this raven, and hopefully that'll be the end of the mission. Oh yeah, it is. Destroy the Kapal and Lance, so th this is the only guy left on the field. Kind of feel bad for this guy. But then again, with as crappy as my pilots are, if these guys were smart, they, they would have run away at the beginning. Funny thing is, during the test stream, we actually had allies. Um, during the test stream, we actually had allies on the mission that we did. And there was this one tank that just killed everything. Like, all the enemies were killed by a single unit. And it wasn't one of my people. I was... I was very disappointed during that mission, but uh, thankfully that was that was in an alternate timeline. That that never happened in this timeline. Uh, only eight percent. Good lord, we we are getting excommed out here. Is that this is again? It's a raven, so it's an electronic warfare mech, which is going to interfere with our ability to hit and do damage. But if we could just get a few good hits on this thing, we could probably kill it very easily because it has almost no armor. It's a very, very fragile mech. In fact, so fragile. Uh, wait, you're oh no, you're a Toro, so you're a light mech. You're not going to be able to do squat. I was going to try to melee this guy, but. This particular mech is just not going to be very effective in that capacity. And you are a panther. Yeah. Screw it. Let's attack. We're going to... I think we'll kick. There we go, we got the hit. And we got the hits with the weapons. Nice, very nice. That's that's when you go full yellow and just decide I'm gonna I'm gonna punch the crap out of you with a giant robot. It's very reminiscent of like Pacific Rim. There we go. So we're destroying some actuators and some weapons. That's good means we've punched through the armor. This guy has now fallen down as a result of that because we destroyed his gyro, which is the thing that keeps his mech standing. And now we are very literally going to dogpile. I'm going to run up and stomp on this guy when he's down. Because honor is for clanners and losers. Although I guess you could say that clanners are losers. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Fight me. Uh, there we go. Hello there, John. Hope you're doing well as well. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday wherever you happen to be. See, we're, we're, we're trying to do this dog pile attack, and this is now three people, but there we go. We, we've made him panic and eject from his mag, so that's, there we go. Well, that's good to hear, good to hear. We get our first mission under our belt, which uh, I'm not going to talk about how much time and effort we had to put into killing just two light mechs, especially for a payout of only 100k. But you know what? It's the first mission of a new campaign. Uh, I'll take what we can get. And we're not going to get much in the way of salvage, but we do get to pick one thing. I don't think we're going to find any. Oh, well, I spoke too soon. 
an Excel engine is going to be a great get for us early in the game. And then, of course, we will still get some more random salvage. But yeah, that Excel engine will give us a little bit more freedom in our mech builds. And even if we don't use it in a build, it's still worth quite a bit of money. So worst case scenario, we can sell it if we get close to the end of the month and need a little extra cash. The only downside is um, because the mech lab or I guess the mech garage stuff is, um, is changed in BTA, the more complicated a modification is, the longer it takes to actually do. Um, and so an XL engine is one of those things that's going to take a long time to change out on a mech. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be as nice as I can about this. Um... And I know I'm not anybody to talk because I'm not some giant internet personality, but as a general rule, it's considered bad form to do a follow for follow kind of thing. Um, and it's especially bad form to do that in someone's Twitch chat while they're trying to stream. Uh, I'm not going to do anything about that, at least for right now, but just know I'm not okay with that. So... Please keep that kind of stuff to a minimum, and please don't try to use my stream to promote yourself. Um, with that being said, we're back at the home base screen. We don't have anybody tired, since that was a relatively simple mission, and we didn't take a lot of damage either, so we're actually in good shape to go right back into another mission. Um, we're not even going to have to fast forward any time, so let's hit the command center and see what we've got available. Um, let's see, we've got a recovery. I don't particularly care for that type of mission. Uh, although we've got another battle. This one is going to be for the independent planetary government. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. It's in a jungle, which I don't remember. Does that have a... Show, show me the tooltip. There we go. Uh, lush plant life, hotter than comfortable temperatures. Yeah, so our mechs that run a little hotter may have some trouble. Uh, but hopefully we'll be all right. Again, because it's early game, I think I'm going to focus more on money than salvage. And uh, we'll just run the same loadout. Same vehicle, same mechs. Everything should be good the way it is. It's okay, John. I, I, I'm not angry, but... Um, there, there's a lot of that that goes on, so I kind of just want to nip it in the bud early and make my stance known on that kind of stuff, so. You're good. You're more than welcome to stick around. Uh, no, no Game Master. Uh, Battletech, if you're not familiar with the setting, is... It's a little difficult to describe, but I would describe it as almost a kind of semi-feudal post-Dark Age, but it's also a hard sci-fi future. Um, in kind of the same way, if you remember Delta V, it's kind of that thing. So in the Battletech universe, uh, it takes place in the 30th and 31st century, so it's the, inter the year 3000. Um, and... Humanity's gone through a whole bunch of stuff, but basically, there are no aliens. You're basically just fighting other human beings. Uh, the draw of the Battletech universe is that kind of, again, like feudal style politics and cloak and dagger stuff. Um, let's see. So we're just destroying enemy units, and we've actually got a long way to go on this one. A lot farther than the last mission. But that's okay. Well, we'll do some sprinting and get up there as quick as we can. And uh, if you're curious, if you guys ever want to know more about the Battletech universe, especially you Game Master, because I know you're, you're always into this type of stuff. But uh, 
if you guys ever want to learn more about Battletech as a setting and not just this game, but it's actually based on a tabletop game um, from way, way back in the 80s. And obviously the fan base is still going strong today. Uh, but if you want to know more about it, there are lots of different ch uh, lots of different places you can check out. Uh, Sarna.net is like the official wiki for the Battletech universe. There's a lot of information there. Um, and then two of the YouTubers that I tend to frequent are uh, the Black Pants Legion, who, yeah, I, I'm, I've been watching Tex and the BPL for many, many years, but he does a series off and on called Tex Talks Battletech. You may have seen it on the YouTubes, uh, but he, he does some long form content and uh, he's, he's kind of funny. He does some good videos. And then the other the other channel that I follow for a lot of Battletech stuff is um, I, I think it's Big Red Forty K. I, I believe that's the name of his channel. Uh, but he does a lot of similar content of uh, like introducing the battle mechs and the setting and and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't say it's not like the Battletech universe. It or I'm sorry, it's not not like Warhammer. It if you're talking about like Forty K. It's not as bleak, but it definitely still has that sort of cynical futurism vibe to it. It's not gothic. It's if you can imagine the the neon tinted like Blade Runner type of future, but also giant robots is is more akin to what you're looking at with BattleTech. Don't get me wrong. I'm also a fan of the 40K universe. Ave Imperator and all that. So yeah, we're still just trying to advance and uh, at least come to contact with the enemy. We're finally seeing the first one, a Centurion. Now, Centurion isn't a great mech late game, but early game, if we could get our hands on one of those, that would actually be very useful. And we can actually take a pot shot with a large laser. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think we were going to get the head on that one, but But yeah, if we could if we could get our hands on a Centurion early, that would not be the worst thing in the world. Uh I think I'm going to have to hang back the vehicle though because the Centurion is going to be pretty good in in close combat and I don't want him squashing my tank like a bug. Uh Warhammer is 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 a very deep rabbit hole in much the same way that Battletech is. Both of them are settings that go back 40 plus years. Uh, there's a lot of lore there. There's a lot of game there. So, uh, yeah, it's... I, I've been in both of those universes, both of those fandoms for a long time, so it's it's not as daunting to me. But if you're just getting into them, yeah, those are some very deep rabbit holes. But thankfully, there are a lot of people out there that will help explain it, the concepts and all that. So it's it's nice to live in the digital age where you don't have to go and and hunt down 30 year old source books just to understand what's going on. You can just watch a 30 minute video and have somebody explain it to you. Wonders of the modern era and all that. Yeah, that was an unlucky hit. We're uh we're taking some hits in the same area. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So that was probably like the worst case scenario of of the ways that this could have gone down. <laughs> and that's kind of my fault for moving a trebuchet up when I didn't know what else we were running up against. So you can clearly see now, we have an urban mech, which is generally considered to be a walking garbage can, um, but that didn't really matter in terms of potentially killing the commander. So I don't know if the commander can actually die in Advance 3062. If you can, uh, that, that might have just happened. So we'll see when we get to the end of this mission. Our other pilots can die for sure if they don't eject. But I might have just gotten myself blown up. Good lord.
like when I check this urban mag, it says it's a howitzer. That is not a howitzer. That's a freaking machine gun. Oh, all right. Well, compared to the last mission, this one's not going so well already, right off the bat. Uh, but we also know now exactly who the primary target needs to be. Uh, you, you, you could potentially. I mean, somebody's going to have to lead the company after if I'm the one that got busted. But we'll have to see. Yeah, it's like suddenly the prospects for this mission are not looking great. And it's going to be this one earth, like, of all the things, of all the things that I could lose a character and a mech to, why did it have to be an urban mech? I <laughs> mean... Like, don't get me wrong, an urban mech with an AC-20 rolling up to, you know, five feet away from you and blasting you with it is one thing, but to be sniped across the map is, is, is not what I was expecting. So yeah, we, we are going to have to focus this thing down in a hurry, and unfortunately, it being an urban mech is also the worst possible thing because urban mechs are very stout. They take a lot of damage. They're not very fast. But when he's got a weapon with that much range, he doesn't need to be fast. I think we're going to have to reposition here because they have got the high ground on us and we are clearly taking some hits as a result of that. So I'm going to continue to move and continue to try to fire as we do. But we, we have got to get out of here because we're basically in a kill zone. Because even with cover and even with evasion bonuses, I'm, I'm still getting chewed up out here. Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, we won't. Well, can I get a better shot on the Centurium? I can. I really should be focusing that urban mech, but we've actually got to make some hits connect. All right, here's 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 the guy in the little tiny vehicle. I'm very worried about his safety. And I really shouldn't be clustering up either, but you know what? Let's let's just go ahead and add that to the comedy of errors. My hope is that I can get my folks over here and kind of climb up here and take the high ground ourselves, but not sure how effective that's going to be, especially with the trebuchet off the field, because now we've basically lost our long our long range support. Um, yeah, guess we'll fire at the Centurion again. Yeah, if there's one thing that the Whitworth is good for, it's it's crap and pretty much... Wait, what? I'm not entirely sure why, but the pilot of that Centurion apparently freaked himself out so much that he stressed out and ejected. Uh, the game is... At least on the freeform campaign settings, it's as difficult as you want it to be. You can make the game very, very easy, or you can make it very, very hard. I have opted to make the game a little more difficult, because I've played a lot of Battletech, and so I just want a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but you could also make it very easy if you want. And the game is also very easy to mod, and it's very easy to cheat. So if you're familiar with, like, Cheat Engine and stuff like that, like, the, there's a lot of ways to enjoy this game, depending on your preference. Um, I will say that the BTA mod, the Advanced 3062 mod, makes the game harder in a lot of respects. But even then, you can still use a lot of the difficulty settings to make the game easier if you want.
I really don't like that lady's voice. And and I know the sound isn't working, so you can't hear her voice, but I don't like that lady's voice. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily encourage that people cheat, but I know that's a thing that people do. And at least when I got the Rogue Tech mod and then when I first downloaded the BTA mod as well, I did use Cheat Engine to give myself some of the late game equipment just so that I could... Like, I wanted to understand how the game played at all levels without having to invest 50 hours in a campaign and to see if it was right for me. And I did, I enjoyed the feel of the gameplay at the higher levels. So that was when I said, okay, yeah, I'll go back and play like an actual mission or an actual campaign. That's one of the things that you can do with cheat software that I think a lot of people discount is, especially in single player games, you can, uh, you can explore the game in ways that you wouldn't normally be able to. Although I'm fully aware that there are a lot of folks out there that use programs like that as an excuse to get an edge in competitive games and stuff like that. I 100% I do not encourage that. So it looks like the urban mech, the, the 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 little trash can that has been shredding my entire team here, is trying to take the high ground again. So we're going to continue moving up and attempt to get the high ground from them. And well, I mean, if you're going to give me those high chances, I'll take the shot. So this is an excavator mech. It's basically a repurposed industrial mech. It's not really made for combat. God, I hate this urban mech. But yeah, the excavator mech is not really as much of a threat as this urban mech. Ah, uh, yeah, we can move there and that'll give us a decent shot here. So let's take the shot. This is... This is kind of depressing. We got a whole bunch of lucky shots and everything in the last mission. And then in this mission, we're just, we, we are getting torn apart. And it doesn't help that these rookie pilots are, are x coming me into the ground here. And Minuteman, already, you're not doing so hot either. Um... You've already taken an injury. Your mech is getting shredded, turned into Swiss cheese out here. I am so sorry for anybody else that dies out here. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you for that, Game Master. After all, you were here from the beginning and the last mission went just fine. Oath. So Minuteman might be meeting their maker in the very near future, which is sad because they were probably the most interesting character on the team up to this point. Uh, let's, I'm going to get into the flanking position up here. This, since the vehicle has so much more movement, I, I think it's worth trying to get a flanking position. I think that might be the end for the Whitworth. And and unfortunately, this is the nature of these types of roguelike mods for Battletech, is you can absolutely get a bad roll. Like, this was a half-skull mission. We should not have run into this mech or this type of firepower um, in this mission at this level, but we did. And unfortunately, we are paying the price, if not literally, then definitely figuratively. And that's just part of the random factor, unfortunately. Not much to be done, except try to make the best of a bad situation. If we can break line of sight... Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, it, while it was a higher payout, that, that can definitely be the indicator. Um, you know, yeah, it's a half-skill mission, but it's also 
a payout four times higher than the last one. So yeah, you're you're definitely right on that. But that's okay. I, I have no problem restarting if it comes to that. It's not a big deal. We're very, very early in the campaign, so nothing ventured, nothing gained. Better to take risks early when you're not losing a whole lot. And I wasn't super happy with my rules on this either. The mechs that we got were kind of doo-doo, and the pilots that we got were also kind of doo-doo, so I wouldn't complain if we ended up having to start over. Uh, yeah, let's let's continue our flanking maneuver here. And thankfully, since he's using artillery, us getting really close is going to give us an advantage. Because now he's either going to have to take a shot, yeah, at someone else, or he's going to have to move away. Good gravy. Hey, you know what? Minuteman ejected. Better than going down with the ship, I suppose. And we are now finally starting to get up on the high ground, which will not only break line of sight from the urban mech that we're trying to avoid, but will also give us accuracy bonuses that our crappy pilots desperately need. And uh, because of the way that this mission has gone so far, you guys will, will get to see, for those of you that, that are not familiar, you'll get to see a little more of what after action looks like when you take a beating. And I really shouldn't be this close, but I am, I am desperate to take this urban mech off the field, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some not great plays here and just hope that we're inside the effective range of the artillery. Yeah, so he's got to move. And thankfully, he's now getting the disadvantaged shots from having to shoot up at us. Yes, this is true. Uh, we, we, we know from the history books. Obi-Wan said it best that he had the high ground. Oh, I don't know. I don't think we have any jumpers. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't think so. We, I'll, I'll check as we cycle through, but I know this mech for sure does not jump. Um, so yeah, again, the excavator mech is, I, I'm not terribly worried about it, but uh, it'll give us something to shoot at as we run from this urban mech. Probably not a great move, but let's let's move the vehicle over here. Go into the darkness. Here I was just saying that the excavator mech isn't a threat as I continue to get shot in the back by it. Oh, okay. So we do have jump on the panther. That... I mean, the way things have been going so far, I I think maybe we just YOLO it, right? That's That would be the appropriate thing to do. I mean, I know you said it's a last resort, but at the same time... Nah, I've, I've already made enough bad decisions this mission. Oh, did he? Yeah, he panicked and ejected. Okay, excellent. That's that's two out of three. Um, but we're also two out of five, so I'd I'd say we're even at the moment. 
Uh, I'm gonna say Tansy. Yeah, um, yeah, all right. I think we will just, as before, do a little movement to get some evasion, and we'll take a shot. And yeah, I'm using long range missiles at close range just because I'll take as much damage as I can get at this point. And now our people are panicking and ejecting as well. Outstanding. <laughs> ah. I can think of a few ways that this mission could have gone worse. But not many. All right, so here we go. We can we can actually... No, we can't. Damn it. I was hoping, because this vehicle has a lot of mobility, that we could potentially get in behind him and do a little bit of a flanking shot, but we can't move quite far enough for that. So we're down to one vehicle and one panther. Not great prospects against an excavator mech because it's very beefy. And we've taken, we, we've done a lot of damage, but they, if we're going to have to burn this guy down, it's, it's going to take a lot longer. Yikes. Yeah, there goes our resolve. <laughs> Everybody's panicking now, as to be expected. Yeah, I don't, I really don't want to fight an excavator mech in close combat. But I think we destroyed the backhoe. Mm. Screw it. We're, we're, we're going to melee this guy just because. There we go, took out a leg, so now he's going to fall down. That'll give us at least one turn of free shots. Assuming he doesn't just panic and eject. Oh, well, there we go. Oof. Yeah, that one, that one qualifies as a big oof. Certainly could have gone better. But that's okay. At the end of the day, the only thing that's stopping us... Uh, from progressing is letting our people queue up and letting our mechs get repaired as best we can. But we'll, uh, I'll talk about that here in just a second. Let's, let's see how bad it is. Um, yeah, so injured for 205 days. The commander, uh, 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 die, but is effectively out of commission for like nine months at this point. Um, so yeah, we're, we're not going to be using the commander for a little bit. Uh, I mean, you can clean the bathroom if you want. I was going to start you out with serving coffee. Uh, and we got salvage assigned. We did get the ammo for that howitzer, but not the gun itself. And we got one part of an urban mech, which... Eh. <laughs>